Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial on using Excel. In this video, we'll look at three different concepts, skewness, kurtosis, and normality. I'm sure uh, a lot of you are well acquainted with these topics. However, today we'll take a slightly different view of these, primarily to derive normality or to check normality of a distribution within Excel. While there are several ways, but we'll look at one of the simplest that we can use if we are using MS Excel to check normality of a distribution. So let's begin. Our first topic for this video is skewness. Skewness uh, generally is defined as uh, the degree of asymmetry in a data set. So while asymmetry can have different meanings, uh, in this case, it is helpful to think of asymmetry about a vertical line that you can draw through the center of a histogram. So if you were to create a data distribution in form of a histogram and draw a straight vertical line, preferably through the center point of that distribution, and if you see that the data points are asymmetrically distributed about that vertical line, then uh, you can say that the data is asymmetrically distributed. So, so let's see how this works. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take three different data sets. We'll try and generate the histogram of those data sets. And uh, for a quick revision of uh, on histogram creation, you might want to watch the video on summary statistics in which we did cover uh, generating a histogram within Excel. So let's begin with the data set that we have first and try and generate the histogram on this. So as we know, in order to generate the histogram, you can go to data analysis, which is something you will need to have installed beforehand. Select the option for histogram and then uh, the data set for which we want to generate the histogram in this case is list one following which we must select the bin uh, the bin as in the different different distribution buckets that we want to select so we have our buckets from zero to two three three to four five to six and so on and finally the thing that we're interested in is chart output so let's select chart chart output and let's say that we want our output to be visible right here. Let's click OK. All right, so here we have our histogram. And uh, what you will notice from the histogram immediately is that there is a certain amount of symmetry about the data distribution. Now, now strictly speaking, uh, this is not a normal distribution. Uh, however, for uh, to in order to get a simple sense of how these distributions look like this would be helpful so if you were to uh, try and draw a simple curve that helps us understand the shape of this we can do this and create a simple curve i'll go through this these points so so this curve right here for instance you can see that it has an almost bell shape curve to it and uh, you will also notice that the the way the data is distributed on either side of the central line seems to be almost equitably distributed so so this is an example of a data distribution which is not skewed or you could say the skewness is zero because they are almost symmetrically distributed on either side now not always is data uniformly distributed the way we see right now so, so let's take an example of a case where data is probably asymmetric or is skewed. So let's take a look at the second list and try and create a distribution around this. If we go back to data analysis again, choose the option for a histogram. This time our data selection will be different. We'll choose list two. So let's create that and let's select the bin range, uh, which will be this. And then uh, let's say we want the output to be available to us right here. And we want chart output. It's already selected. And here we are. We have the chart output. So in this scenario, and we can stretch this a bit further. So in this scenario, what is immediately apparent to us is that this data is not symmetrical the way this was in this week we could see that 
above about the central line if you were to draw a central line you would notice that the data was almost symmetrically distributed on either side of that central line in this case you'll notice that that is not the case if we were to similarly try and draw a line that connects all of these points and this is a rough approximation but this would help all right so we have a approximate line that connects the points on the histogram and what's immediately apparent is that on this histogram you will see that it seems to be extending or stretching more towards the right hand side you will see the the tail on the right hand side is more stretched so this is an example of a right skewed data distribution and whenever you're dealing with a right skewed data distribution what you will generally notice on a, on a right skewed data distribution is that uh, uh, if you were to calculate the skewness and we'll shortly look at that if you were to calculate the skewness uh, this will generally be higher than uh, positive 0 0.5 to higher positive values but the important thing to bear in mind is that this what you're seeing right now is a right skewed distribution right now let's see an example of possibly a left skewed distribution as well to gather the difference so again let's go ahead and uh, generate the histogram in this case and see how does the data distribution appear to be our uh, input data set in this example is going to be list three and the bin range we can select right here and we need our output to appear let's say over here and we want chart output click on ok and there we have the table now what we can simply do is bring the chart output over to the other side okay. all right we almost have it okay so here we have the chart output and in this case what you'll immediately notice again is that the data seems to be more stretched on the left hand side so again if you were to draw a connecting line just to understand the shape of this data distribution what you'll notice is that the data distribution seems to be more stretch towards the left hand side so this would be an example of a left skewed data set here again generally if you were to calculate the skewness of this data set uh, using excel or any other method you'll notice that uh, this can generally take on values from minus 0 0.5 to lower values anything usually with the skewness in between the range of minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 will be an approximate uh, normal distribution with zero skewness so an important factor to remember is that precisely normal distributions have zero skewness so this is a good illustration of understanding how this would look like so remember again a quick recap uh, so the first diagram is that of a zero skewness data distribution almost symmetrical on both sides of a vertical line uh, then what we looked at was right skewed remember skewness is determined by the direction in which the tail is being stretched so this is an example of a, a right skewed distribution and then in this case we looked at a left skewed distribution here again remember the tail appears to be stretched more towards the left hand side now if you were to calculate skewness using uh, an inbuilt function within Excel. So for instance, if you were to use it, the function is called skew. And uh, if you just select the set of numbers for which, the, or the distribution for which you want to calculate the skew, skewness, uh, you'll see the skewness, uh, it's not exactly going to be zero. If you were to increase the decimal points a bit, you might see some more points, uh, you might see some more numbers. But here you can see that a nearly symmetrical distribution the skewness is almost zero now let's go ahead and calculate the skewness for let's call it 
it was skewed and now let's calculate the skewness for a right skewed distribution here let's select skew and select the second list let's see what do we get as you can see uh, the skewness is more than zero ideally for it to be classified as uh, right skewed remember that this will be higher than 0 0.05 but you get the picture in this case the tail will be more stretched towards the right and now let's also understand the skewness part for a left skewed distribution so for a left skewed distribution if you were to take the set of numbers calculate the skew you will see that it leads to a negative uh, 0.5894 so this is well and truly a left skewed distribution okay so now we have some sense of what skewness means it has to do with symmetry or asymmetry of a data distribution so moving on from skewness to uh, another way of understanding or looking at the shape of data distributions which is kurtosis so kurtosis in a lot of different texts can usually be referred to as the the peakedness of data which is how peaked is the data uh, but generally that's a misnomer usually Kurtosis has to do with the tailedness or uh, how heavy or light are the tails. Uh, that can be that can be confusing at times, but uh, let, let's try and look at uh, the histogram of these distributions that we have on this sheet to see if we can get a more visual appeal for this. So let's go ahead and uh, generate the histograms for this as well. So going back to data analysis histogram, let's select our uh, data range here on this one so this is our data range and let's select the bin range as well uh, which will be similar to what we had selected for the skewness examples and the output that we desire is let's say we want to place it here now let's go ahead keep it as chart output and there it is generated as you can see in this case uh, this is again very similar to the zero skew symmetric distribution that we saw prior to this when we're looking at skewness so so generally speaking uh, when you calculate kurtosis or when you look at data distribution from a kurtosis perspective uh, those data distributions which are mildly uh, bell-shaped like are uh, generally going to be uh, classified as mesokurtic and these are normal distributions so uh, just for visualization purposes, let's go ahead and uh, join them through a certain graphical line. This is an almost uh, fairly equitably created bell-shaped curve right here. And that's what it looks like. And this is called mesokurtic. And we'll come back to this shortly. Now, let's look at the next distribution that we have and when you look at this next distribution you will see that the way uh, this data is that it will show a certain a certain amount of uh, peakedness or tailedness uh, on the data so let's go back to uh, the data analysis part and uh, we want to generate the histogram again let's select the data range in here so the data range we want to select on this is this and the bin range is for the second bin that we have here so here we are and we want to put the output range let's say right here all right we want chart output there we are so when we look at this distribution now in this distribution what you'll find is that unlike the previous one we have a very sharp peak right here and uh, another way of looking at this is you will find that the tails on this are very different from the tails that we saw so in this the data distribution shape almost creates a very sharp peak hence the reason why a lot of different reference texts generally talk about peakedness of a distribution so this sort of a distribution is high on kurtosis and uh, this is generally referred to as a leptokurtic curve 
Okay. Now, this is not something that you have to uh, really memorize or remember, but uh, good to know from an information standpoint. Just remember that this is the example of uh, a, a data distribution with kurtosis which is on the higher side. So, is so this will generally show a very steep uh, curve on it, like, uh, and you can possibly see a peak on this one. Now, to get a better feel of the other version or the or the other extreme. When it comes to kurtosis, we'll just go ahead and take a look at the third distribution once so that we can quickly compare all three and get a sense of this. So let's say we select the histogram again and uh, the input range that we are interested in, in this case, is going to be for list three. So let's select list three on this and then let's select the bin that we have or the bin range right here. We have the bin range and from output, let's say we want to place the output right here and let's go ahead with chart output so there we are we have the bin range as well and this is the third data distribution curve that we have on this one what you'll notice is that this one does not again have a sharper curve generally what you will have here is a much more flatter version of uh, of the curve this is a flatter version of the curve unlike the first two so this uh, is almost like this so this is a flatter curve and this is generally referred to as flatty curtic again like i said you don't have to memorize this just for information purposes Key thing to remember is that generally speaking, when you have a normal curve, it is going to be mesocurtic, and that's mesocurtic is uh, the is an average uh, distribution peakedness that you'll generally see. So this is mesocurtic, uh, and then when you have a much steeper, much steeper uh, data distribution peak within your data, then that's leptocurtic. So this will have high kurtosis. And then the other extreme is lower kurtosis, which with a much more flatter curve that you have here, and this is called as flatty kurtic. Uh, you might want to bear in mind, it's useful to know that for mesocurtic curves generally, the if you calculate the kurtosis, uh, you, you will see that the kurtosis will come very close to uh, will come very close to P for a mesocurtic. Uh, data distribution. On the other hand, for uh, leptocurtic, what you'll find is it'll generally be greater than three. And uh, for platycurtic, you'll generally find it less than three. And how would you know of this? Uh, within Excel, you have an inbuilt formula. You can use KURT and calculate the kurtosis of any di distribution data set. So if I was to select list one and calculate kurtosis, this is what it would come like. Now you might question that uh, you know if this is a uniform uh, symmetrical data set with uh, with very mediocre or medium uh, level of peakedness or tailedness why is the kurtosis coming out to be negative and not equal to three that's so because the distribution that you have here under list three is not strictly speaking a uh, normal uh, data set this was just created to give us a sense of what we mean by kurtosis so that's why this, this is the value. But generally, if you were to look at a typically normally distributed graph, then this is what the kurtosis would, might turn out to be. So, uh, so this was a brief introduction to kurtosis and just to make sure that you have a certain sense. So quick recap, remember that a normally distributed data set, the skewness is almost equal to zero or zero. And when it comes to kurtosis, remember that kurtosis uh, for a normally distributed uh, data set uh, it will be a mesocurtic graph, so the kurtosis will be uh, equal to or close to three. So, why is this important? Well, what we're going to do uh, in the uh, next section now is apply the skewness and the kurtosis concept that we just looked at to uh, to understanding if a certain data set or evaluating the data set for normality. Uh, there are many ways of looking at normality. However, this is one of the easiest that we can use. Uh, before we look at that, let's just do a quick recap of why normality. So uh, you will often see that within statistical tests, 
within data analysis, within data science, machine learning. There is extremely widespread use of uh, checking normality of a distribution. Why, why is it so important? As you might know, that uh, normal data distributions tend to be the most commonly occurring ones within natural phenomena. Uh, and, and, and you will see that uh, you can find it in something as unusual as uh, if you take a large population set and you look at the weights of the people in that population, the distribution of weights turns out to be normal. If you look at shoe size, if you, if you look at shoe size for again a large distribution of people, chances are very high that the shoe size will turn out to be very close to be a normally distributed set. If you look at the distribution of marks in a university, uh, the marks that different students have got, chances are very high that those marks will turn out to be normally distributed as well. And, and then there is one very specific use uh, that we'll look at later on towards the end of the tutorial today. Uh, what's the uh, second more, most important point on this? So apart from accurately describing many natural phenomena, uh, a normal data set or also known as a Gaussian uh, distribution is a very well understood distribution and it allows application of a lot of different statistical tools with ease. In fact, in those cases where you have non-normal data, uh, it is usually transformed by different techniques and methods to see if we can get an approximate normal distribution which allows for easy application of a lot of different tools and methods. So, so having said that, let's move on to the normality test that we wanted to look at today. So the normality test that we're going to look at today is the hark bearer test. Well, there are numerous different tests that uh, some of you might have already used, like uh, uh, some of the more common ones are Anderson Darling. Uh, another one which is of very common use is uh, Kolgomorov Chernov. Uh, and uh, and uh, in a lot of different uh, reference points, tutorials, you'll find that a very preferred method to check normality is Shapiro Wilk. Uh, you can also do a uh, uh, a chi-square goodness of fit test which is again equally useful but the one that we're going to look at today is going to be the hark bearer test now what the hark bearer test does in essence is that it tries to understand that the that if the given data set is uh, is very close in terms of skewness and kurtosis to what we expect from a normal distribution so how does it work uh, the way it works is that given the distribution, so for instance, here we have a random test data set right here. And given this random test data set, what uh, we have to do is first of all, calculate the test statistic, usually known as the hark bearer or the JB test statistic, which can be done by using the formula that you see right here for reference. So, uh, so for instance, if you were to try and calculate the test statistic right here, uh, select the data range, out here and, uh, and then we can uh, calculate the skewness of the data set in fact we have to square it up so let's calculate the skewness and followed by the kurtosis so again use the inbuilt formula for kurtosis all right here we are so take a look at it again count a that will give us the count of the uh, set of numbers within our test data set or in the sample uh, the skewness uh, squared that we can get by using the power and the skew that we're using and finally the last term for kurtosis you can use the curt formula on the sample data set square it up and divide that by four to get that number all right let's see so that's our test statistic right there that we have and following the test statistic what uh, you can then do from here onwards is uh, you could use uh, the test statistic to then come at a p-value. Now, the p-value, uh, which we'll again cover in a different tutorial uh, because it's highly misunderstood at times, but for now, uh, in order to calculate the p-value, we can use a, a chi distribution. Uh, we can use a chi distribution. 
and uh, so what we'll use is a, a chi distribution and this is the formula for that that you can utilize the the chi distribution will take the value of the test statistic which is 1.37 in this case and uh, the degrees of freedom now uh, degrees of freedom have different values on running different tests but out here the degree of freedom is going to be two so so why two because remember that the way we are trying to evaluate or analyze this data set is basis the sum of the two squared uh, standard normally distributed values which is skewness and kurtosis so since we are only using the uh, two aspects of the data set skewness and kurtosis uh, here we're going to utilize the degree of freedom as two and then once we use it you can see that the p value is 0 0.50 so how do we interpret this now the interpretation is that remember that the hark bera is essentially a hypothesis test uh, so on the hypothesis test uh, the h null has been set up as the data set is normal and the h alternate is set up as the data set is not normal so here if your p value is greater than 0 0.05 then that means that we failed to reject the null in other words uh, we will stick with the null and the null says that the data set is normal so given this value of p which is 0 0.50 which is greater than 0 0.05 we will we will out here and remember that in statistics uh, generally uh, stay away from the word uh, from the word prove this does not prove this uh, you can say that this indicates that uh, this is a normal data set it doesn't prove it but it indicates that so given this p-value we can surmise that the data set that we have in column b is a nearly normal data set so uh, before we end this uh, tutorial one very important thing uh, when we looked at the tutorial on regression and uh, what we did not cover at that point of time is uh, some very important assumptions of regression. One of those assumptions is that when you look at the error terms or the residuals of the regression study, remember that for, for us to take the regression study as valid, one of the key assumptions that need to be fulfilled is that the distribution of the residuals or the error terms has to be normally distributed, as we generally expect with a lot of naturally occurring phenomena for instance so uh, so we're going to use normality tests or different kind of normality tests when we look at the residual values in in the upcoming tutorials that we have especially on regression but that's what we want to cover in uh, in today's video so thanks a lot for watching hopefully uh, this was interesting and we we all learned something today see you next time mm -hmm.